Welcome to another video. We're talking about similar figures and scale drawings. So at the top, it, said, it says Jessie is using a map to travel from her home to the state capital. She measures on the map to find the route is four inches long. The scale of the map says that one inch is equal to 20 miles. So how could Jessie determine the number of miles she will travel to the state capital? Well, this should make a lot of sense to you. Um, if you think about it for a moment, if she's moving four inches and every inch is 20 miles, all we're doing is multiplying by four. So we should get 80 miles of travel. So this leads us into what we wanna talk about today, and that is finding scale drawings. And I like to use the, uh, the analogy or the example of, if you look at a scale model, a scale model, whether it's a car, whether it's a building, whether it's a Lego figurine, they're all, mo they're all scaled down from the original. So what we wanna be able to find today is what if we're missing one side length? Could we find the, the height or the side length of whatever we're looking for if we know one other measurement? So similar figures have corresponding side lengths that are proportional. And we talked about this in the last lesson. Right, we talked about ratios. So this is the same idea today. We're looking for a proportional rate. So when two figures are similar, a proportion or scale factor, we talked about scale factor in the last video, can be used to find the length of an unknown side. Okay. So in other words, what we're saying is yesterday we talked about, well, if I just take this side length and I divide it by this side length, I know the scale factor, um, which is going to play a role in how we find this missing length here. So let's talk about how to do this real quick. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this written up on the board because my handwriting is horrible when I use the mouse. So you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's, let's put, um, we're going to put DE, I'm sorry, we're going to put AB, I, I spoke out wrong, AB over BC. So uh, we're, instead of working with the new to the original, we're working with the original. So here's my ratio, AB over BC, which is six over eight. We're going to make that equal to DE over EF. So um, this side length corresponds with this side length, which is why they're both on top. And then this side length corresponds with this side length, which is why they're both on bottom. Okay, now let's plug in our numbers there. So we have six over eight equals four over, I don't know, let's call it X. And if you remember in the past, we've done cross multiplying. I realize some of you still struggle with that. Cross multiplying, it, all it really is, is just, hey, we're gonna multiply opposite numbers. So four and eight are gonna be multiplied and then six and X are going to be multiplied. So that would give us six X equals 32, eight times four is 32. And then all we're gonna do is solve for X. So if you divide both sides by six, you're gonna get X equals 5.3. So what that means is if I'm scaling down from six to four, then this side length also has to scale down from eight to 5.3, okay? And I realize that's not a nice number, it's not a whole number, um, but if we're scaling down at that rate, that would be our number. Now, please be careful, because I often have students that go, well, but I went from, six to four, that's only two difference. So I'm probably only going down two here. So it should be six here, but as you can see, that is not the case. All right, let's do a couple examples of what this might look like. So number one, we have trapezoid ABCD is similar to trapezoid QRST. We're gonna be looking for this side length right here, RS. We're gonna call that X. Okay. So now let's think about our corresponding sides. Now what you put on top is not of importance. You can put the X on the top or the bottom, but I always like to start from the top down. So I'm gonna do 2.8 over 1.7. Now we're only given two measurements here, so we can only use those two, but as you'll find out later on, if you look forward to number two and number three, we do have, we typically have more than two options. So. We're gonna use the two options we're given here. Now 2.8 or BC corresponds with what side length? It corresponds with RS. So that means my X is going to be on the top and AD corresponds with QT. So 5.1 will be on the bottom. So hopefully you can see why in the last lesson we talked about corresponding side lengths because that's going to be um, the process with which we determine what our missing side length is going to be. Okay, so now you are going to need a calculator, but we're going, we're going to 
cross multiply. So I'll write this down step by step for you. So we're going to do 2.8 times 5.1, which would give us, uh, we're going to write this out, 1.7x equals 14.28. Okay, and then we're going to divide by 1.7 because we want x by itself. So divide by 1.7, and we're going to get 8.4 as our answer there. And we'll put meters since it is a side length. Okay, so 8.4 would be the length there. All right, number two. Number two is a little bit different setup. The perimeter of triangle GHI is 40 centimeters. If the triangles are similar, then what is the length of JL? So you may be looking at this going, but Mr. Warren, we already know both the side lengths. Okay, well, that's true, but remember, we're looking for JL. So we want to know this side length here. So do we know this side length here? And you may be looking at me going, well, no, it doesn't say that on there. You'd be right. But remember, it said the perimeter is 40 centimeters. What that means is the distance around the entire triangle is 40 centimeters. Okay, so what that means is I already know these two side lengths. If I add them up, I get 30. And if the whole thing is 40, all I need to do is to subtract to find the difference, which means this side length has to be 10 centimeters in order for this to completely add up to 40 centimeters. All right, I hope that all made sense. Next thing we want to do is set up similar here. Um, so we do need to make sure that we utilize this side length here, right? JL corresponds with GI. So I want to make sure that I incorporate that. So let's do, let's do GH, which is 15. My mouse does not want to cooperate. And we're going to do GI, which is 10. And we're going to set that equivalent or equal to uh, its corresponding side, which is 10 and its corresponding side, which is x. Okay, this one you shouldn't need a calculator. I hope cross multiply, you're going to get 15x equals 100. Divide by 15. This is where you may need the calculator. I forgot about that. This gives you a repeater. 6.6 .6 repeating would be our answer for x. So notice we didn't just go down by five, we went down by less here. So it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, I have a lot of students that go, oh, it must be five there. Nope, it's 6.6. .6. That would be our side length there. Okay, last one on this slide. Triangle HJK is similar to triangle LMN. Bethany says there is more than one proportion that can be used to determine the missing side length. Do you agree? Well, we kind of went back and forth in, in, in one of my classes, whether we agree or not. I guess we could agree in the sense that it doesn't matter which set of numbers I use as long as I'm using one of the side lengths that I'm looking for. So in other words, I have to make sure I use HJ because I'm looking for its corresponding side LM. What other number I use, it doesn't matter. So uh, let's go ahead and let's use 10 here. Let's do HK and we'll do LN. So HK is 10, HJ is eight. We're going to set that equal to 25. Did the right, okay. Just making sure over X. Okay, so 25, I should be able to do this without the calculator. 25 times eight is like 20, is like eight quarters, which would give you $2. So that would be 10 X equals 200. That's a horrible two. All right, and then divide by 10. So X would equal 20, okay. So we could say, I mean, I'll let you put down what you think there. Um, do you agree or disagree? We justified our solution. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, two and three dimensional objects can be represented with a scale drawing or what we call the scale model. I did mention this at the beginning of the lesson. For example, a map is a scale model. Um, anytime you look at a paper map or even a globe, it's scaled down from the actual item or, or thing. A photograph is usually a scale. Sometimes uh, when, we, when you take a photograph on your phone, obviously it's gonna look smaller than it really was. Or if you increase it and hang it on your wall, sometimes it's larger than it really is. Shadows of an object. Uh, we did an activity with one of my classes yesterday where we measured the height of one student and measured their shadow. 
So that way we had two measurements and then we measured the shadow of a couple different large items out in the parking lot. So you can figure out um, the height of something by using its shadow. So that is an option. Uh, blueprints for a house and then of course a model car. And I was gonna add Legos on there. I, I think most Legos today, especially uh, what the world of Lego is doing is a lot of uh, scale models especially when you get into the cars and the buildings, stuff like that that they're coming out with that are very expensive. But I digress. Uh, number four, the photo below will be enlarged to form a 16 by 20 inch print. What is the scale factor needed to enlarge it? So we go back to what we did in the last lesson. Okay. So remember, for this one, all we need are, are one side length. So if we're going from, uh, let's see, what would be the corresponding length? I, I'm going to assume that since 16 is smaller than 20, we're going to correspond it with 4. So if we go from 4 to 16, uh, remember, this is going to be the new. This is going to be the original. So let's go 16 over 4. Um, and if we simplify that, we're going to get a scale factor of four. So in other words, we're going to be enlarging every aspect of that picture to make it four times larger than the original. Okay, number five, a tree casts a shadow that is nine feet long. At the same time, a person standing nearby casts a shadow that is three feet long. So again, this, is, this goes to what I just mentioned a second ago. We measured the shadows of a person and of a object, which I think the tree and the building were two things that we used yesterday. If a person is 5.5 feet tall, how tall is the tree? Okay. So here's where we use our proportions. We talked about this in the last lesson. So let's, let's identify, see, we're working with the person. The person is 5.5 feet tall. Their shadow, let's see, so the tree casts a shadow of nine feet. The person casts a shadow of three feet. So we're going to put this over three and we're going to set this equal to what are the corresponding sides? Well, we're only given the shadows. So that means the shadow here, if it's three feet for the person and nine feet for the tree, the nine is going to go on the bottom. Okay. These are our shadows. We're looking for the height of the tree. So since the height of the person is 5.5, I can find the height of the tree by putting X here. And just like we did with proportions or ratios, we can cross multiply, right? So let's multiply those two numbers. I can't do that in my head. So I'm gonna use a calculator, nine times 5.5 and then three times X. So we're gonna have three X equals 49.5. And then last step is to divide by three because we want X by itself. So that means that the tree is 16.5 feet tall. 16.5 feet tall. Okay, pretty simple. And that should make sense, right? If the person is five and a half feet tall, they cast a three foot shadow. Uh, it would make sense that we're gonna be multiplying this by almost three. Or is it, th is it three exactly? I think it's three exactly, huh? Three times, yeah, it is three times larger. So three times larger. All right, so that's how you would find that missing side length. Next problem, number six. A map of the state of Texas shows the scale to be one inch equals 80 miles. The distance between Austin and Corpus Christi is 232 miles. How far apart with the, will the two cities be on the map? So we're kind of going in reverse. Uh, the, the example we had at the beginning was if the map is one inch to 20 miles, how many miles is four inches? Now it's, uh, we know that it's 232 miles apart. So how many inches apart would it be? So we're going to set up our scale here. One inch is 80 miles. And we're going to set that equal to, since we know the miles here, we're going to put 232 on the bottom, right? We talk about um, congruent sides. So make sure that if you put miles on the bottom, you put miles on the bottom here. These are the corresponding sides. Okay, and then you can just cross multiply. This one's easy because it has the one. So we're gonna have, let's change colors. We're gonna have 80X equals 232. And let's take 232 divided by 80 because we want X by itself. 
that's going to give us 2.9 inches on the map. All right, 2.9 inches. That does seem small, but 2.9 inches. Number seven, Susie walks 1.5 miles to school. When she looks at the map, it shows the scale to be one centimeter equals 0.5 miles. What is the distance between Susie's house and her school on the map? So make sure that we understand that on the map. Okay. So let's review. It says the map shows a scale of one centimeter to five point mi five miles. So let's use that as our starting point. One over point five equals, and she walks one point five miles. So remember, I put miles on the bottom. So I'm going to keep with that corresponding side miles on the bottom. We want to know how many centimeters on her map. Okay. So same thing as the last one, cross multiply. This one shouldn't be too bad either since we have a one on the top there. So 0.5x equals 1.5. Lost my train of thought there for a second. 1.5 divided by 0.5 is going to give us three. So on her map, she'll notice that she is moving three centimeters. Okay. We are moving along. Number eight, Abby studies a map of Italy that shows a scale of 0.5 centimeters uh, equals 10 kilometers. The Pantheon and the Spanish Steps are 0.4 centimeters apart on the map. The Trevi Foundation is located exactly halfway between the Pantheon and the Spanish Steps. What is the distance in kilometers from the Trevi Foundation to the Spanish Steps? Oh man, there's a lot to this, isn't there? Okay. So first off, we know we have a scale of 0 0.5 to 10 kilometers. I made that a lot longer than I meant to. All right. Why did I write that? I don't know. I don't know why I put 10 kilometers. I'll go ahead and write centimeters here just for the heck of it. Okay, 0.5 centimeters is 10 kilometers. Now, the Pantheon and the Spanish Steps are 0.4 centimeters apart on the map. The Trevi Foundation is located exactly halfway between the Pantheon and the Spanish Steps. So we're talking about cutting this in half. What is the distance in kilometers from the Trevi Foundation to the Spanish Steps? So I had to think about this. If the entire distance is 0.4 centimeters and we're talking about going half, then we're going to write this as 0 0.2, right? Because I... I cut this in half, so half of 0.4 is 0.2. And I'm looking for how many kilometers that's going to be. So now we're going to cross multiply. So 10 times 0.2 gives us two. So we're gonna have 0.5x equals two. And then divide that two by 0.5. So the actual distance here is four kilometers four kilometers apart. So notice in this example, we actually went down in our proportion, which means we also went down the kilometers, but typically we're going up and this number is bigger than this number. So we can go either direction and still get what we're looking for. And I had a couple students do that yesterday where they looked for the shadow of the curb. The curb is obviously much shorter than they are. And I wanted to know if they could figure out using this formula or this proportion, if they could figure out the height of the curb without actually measuring the curb. I don't know if they measured the curb or not to try to cheat, but that's kind of what we're looking at. All right, number nine. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADE. Oh, this is fun. These are the ones that students usually hate because ABC is this, this big triangle here, right? And ADE, I'll use a different color, ADE is this triangle within the triangle. Okay, so we know they're similar simply because they're within each other, but this makes for an interesting uh, problem here. So what is the length of EC? So we're looking for this length here. Okay, so how do we find that length? All right, let's see. What would be our best course of action? I should have been more prepared for this and I should know this, but give me a second as I think through this. I'm also looking to see if we have that written down somewhere because I think I have it written down. Um, 
So notice EC is not part of either of the triangles, but we do know, let's see, we do have a ratio, don't we? What if we did, what if we did this side length right here? Uh, we don't know that one though. Okay, we do have this in proportion though, right? I could do seven over five equals 21 over X. And, and, and I can do that because these two will add up to a proportion that will be the same here, right? So in other words, the proportion I have here, seven to five, is gonna be the same as the proportion I have here, 21 to this number, okay? So I should be able to cross multiply 21 times 5 gives me 105, so we have 7x equals 105. So let's go ahead and divide that by 7. So x should equal 15. Okay, so if x equals 15, I just want to make sure this makes sense. If x equals 15, then I should have a proportion that is equal here. So 7 plus 21 gives me 28. Uh, 5 plus 15 gives me 20. So if we had a size of 28 over 20 would be equivalent to 7 over 5. Okay. That does work then, doesn't it? Because we're saying that the large triangle ABC is four times the size of ADE. So if I multiplied 7 times 4, I would get 28. If I multiply 5 times 4, I would get 20. So yes, this in fact does work. I just want to make sure, and I and apologize if that took a little bit long, but I'm, I'm working on it with you guys sometimes, and I want to make sure that everything makes sense. And so this is how I think through double checking my work. And I would encourage you guys to do the same. Don't just get an answer and go, okay, I'm done. Because a lot of times, if you're anything like me, I get an answer and, I, and I'm done because I've put so much effort into the rest of it. But please don't, don't let that moment pass by where you could have double checked to make sure your answer made sense and you didn't do it. I believe that was the last slide. Yes, it was. So that does it for this video. I will see you guys on the next one. As always, if you have questions, reach out and I will see you guys next time.